This is Priscilla White from St Faith and St Lawrence Church with worship for the 2nd of May. If you're watching this via Facebook, Twitter or our website, you should have found a handy link to the order of service near there. But if you've not, um, there will be some subtitles appearing on the screen which will help you to join in with the responses. As we begin, still in the middle of complexity and uncertainty, let's take a moment to remember that we are present here with God and surrounded by the love of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our opening responses. Loving God. Hear our cry. Bring us to life. Redeeming God, rescue us. Bring us to life. Spirit of God, breathe on us. Bring us to life. Our first hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
So we come to confession. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct that we sh what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we listen to our choir singing Gloria in Excelsis. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now this is the point where those who are frequent followers of these videos will know that I suggest that you pause the video that you read the readings in the order of service for yourself, spend a little time reflecting on them and then come back and join in again and hear the reflection which today is going to be given by Sally who's one of the readers here. Um, the readings are Acts chapter 8 verses 26 to 40 and John chapter 15 verses 1 to 8. So if you don't have an order of service you can find those in your Bible. When you've done that, come back, join us for Sally's reflection and moving on into the rest of the service. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. When I began my reader training, I believed that preaching would be the hardest part of being a reader. Sometimes it has been, and at other times not so. Delivering the sermon once it's prepared is the easier bit, but still quite demanding. But even now, and perhaps more so, the preparation can be very hard. And the more I read scripture and commentaries and sermons, the more I realise the more reading I need to do, and also to have opportunities 
to discuss different passages from the Bible. I also seem to have increasingly more questions than answers. The two readings we have heard this morning are quite testing, but I am comforted and supported from them both. At key points in his ministry, Jesus emphasised his equality with God in the clearest possible terminology. In this morning's Gospel, John describes how Jesus uses the image of the vine to show our connection with him. The image of Jesus as the true vine and his followers as the branches may not be as obvious to us as it was for the Jews back in the time of Jesus. The image of the vine was a rich one for the Jews, since the land of Israel was covered with numerous vineyards. The vine had religious connotations to it as well, and there are many references to the importance of the vineyard throughout the Old Testament. Isaiah spoke of the house of Israel as the vineyard of the Lord, Jeremiah said that God had planted Israel as the choice vine. There is the inner connection between the vine and the grapes and the wine, which will give our life new taste. Vines are not necessarily part of most people's daily lives these days, unless you happen to work in a vineyard or you are a regular visitor to France. But the vine is a powerful metaphor to help the disciples and to help us to understand who Jesus is. And so we are given one of the most powerful descriptions of eternal life, to which John is bearing witness. Jesus defines the final I am statement, that he is now indeed the true vine and his disciples will be the branches. Like the other great I am passages recorded in John, Jesus is alerting the disciples to who he is. Each I am elevates Jesus to the creator, the sustainer, the saviour and the Lord. Jesus has already told the disciples, I am the light of the world, I am the bread of life, I am the way and I am the door. Now he is stating that he is the true vine for all. Jesus' overwhelming desire is to teach the disciples about the most vital relationship they will have in their lives. That is the one with Jesus and God his Father. Jesus wants to remove any misunderstanding and he describes in detail how no branch can even live, let alone produce leaves and fruit by itself. Cut up from the trunk, a branch will die. Jesus' disciples will depend on being connected to him for their spiritual life to thrive and the ability to serve him effectively after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Even though the disciples would no longer enjoy his physical presence, his living energy, his spiritual reality would continue to nourish and sustain them. Just as the roots and trunk of a grapevine produce the energy that nourishes and sustains its branches while they develop the fruit. So we are in no doubt that no one can serve God effectively until they are connected with Jesus Christ by faith. Jesus is our connection with the God who gave life and who can produce in us a fruitful life of righteousness and service. This is exactly what John wants us to know. In the reading from Acts, we meet Philip the Evangelist. Acts tells us how the Christian movement came into being following the death and resurrection of Jesus, and then the spread of its message to the Roman Empire. Philip was leading a very fruitful life. He had been chosen to care for the poor of the Christian community in Jerusalem. He preached and reportedly performed miracles. 
and mess and that baptized an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, on the road from Jerusalem to Gaza. Philip's in encounter with the Ethiopian official gives us very important lessons regarding our own Christian lives, particularly being obedient to God and what the Lord wants to do through us. The eunuch was a man of high standing and importance, holding office in the Ethiopian court. It is unlikely that he would be Jewish, and being a eunuch, he would not have been a proselyte to Judaism. But it would seem that something about the Jewish God and the Jewish way of life had attracted him. So he had made the long journey to Jer Jerusalem to worship there. He had been to the temple and was now struggling to understand some scripture just as Philip meets up with him. Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked? Well, that's a great question, a confronting question, and I think it is the kind of question, question that is constantly before us when we read the Bible. Do we always understand what we are reading? Straight away. The Ethiopian's reply is simply, How can I understand unless someone gives me some help. This is indeed a very sensible reply. The Ethiopian now asks, Who is the prophet's prophet talking about? Who was Isaiah writing about when he described the one led like a lamb to the slaughter? Powerful responses for Philip to interpret. The path had been a rocky one for the apostles in Jerusalem following the death of Jesus. But God had promised to build the church to the ends of the earth. Although Philip had had some success in Samaria, the character of the eunuch adds another dimension. God reaches out through Philip. Philip now declares to the Ethiopian how Jesus was the one through whom the slow and winding story of God's people had reached its destination. A new dawn had arrived, and with it a new covenant for everyone throughout the world. The Ethiopian responds with immense excitement, and his baptism signifies new understanding. No wonder he went on his way celebrating to become, if tradition is to be, be believed, the first evangelist in his native country. We should also reflect and appreciate that one of the first non-Jews to come to faith and baptism was a black man from Africa. So our readings this morning have given us remarkable glimpses of the story of Jesus. The short passage from Isaiah, Isaiah being read by the Ethiopian and interpreted by Philip reminds us how the Old Testament is full of many prophecies about Jesus and images that foreshadow him. In John's Gospel, we have been shown how all that is earthly is an image of the mystery of Jesus. And when Jesus calls himself the true vine, he claims that he is fulfilling all the longing that people have ever associated with the, with the vine and the wine becomes the blood of the earth. Jesus came that we might have life and to experience it abundantly. A loving God gives us the promise that if we remain joined to Jesus and maintain a close relationship with him, we can become and do amazing things. We too can be like Philip, guiding, supporting, and celebrating with others the good news of Jesus. Jesus wants to be the wine that intoxicates us, that fills us with love and with joy. Jesus gives himself and his love in wine. And that's definitely worth celebrating with a very fine glass of wine, but not just yet in church. Amen. And so as we remember Jesus and all that he did, 
and the signs and miracles that he offered. We hear the choir singing, Jesus turned the water into wine. We come to declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is the second point where I suggest you might like to pause the video, take time to pray on your own and to focus on areas of need in the world, of praying for our church, not only our own small congregation, but the church throughout the world. Praying for the Church of England, for its archbishops, Justin and Stephen, praying for our community, for those you care about, for those who are in need. When you've done that again, come back and we will um, resume with the Lord's Prayer and the end of the service. 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So insofar as we are able to do so, please offer yourselves a sign, one another a sign of peace if you're with somebody, or sit for a moment and reflect on those with whom you would love to share Christ's peace. Our closing responses. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. Our final piece of music, I the Lord of sea and sky.
also may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.